Just bear with me. We're going to read just a few areas of scripture here today. Proverbs 17, 17 says this. A friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Proverbs 18, 24. A man that hath friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Now over in uh, Song of Solomon, first chapter. Been reading on that a lot, even preached on it Friday night at the youth rally. But the maid here, or uh, the bride of Christ, the church, verse 5 says, I am black but comely. O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon, look not upon me because I am black, because the sun hath looked upon me. My mother's children were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyards, but my own vineyard have I not kept. So there's abuse there. Now over in the Gospel of John, we close with the reading. Gospel of John chapter 15. Gospel of John chapter number 15. John 15, verse 12. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Then the Lord says, Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, help us this morning. Anoint me to preach and communicate the will of God. Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit would awaken our alertness this morning to be able to glean what the Spirit would say to the church. And may truth enter us, Lord, to help us in the time we're living in. Oh, Lord of heaven, move by your Spirit right now, we pray. Uh, Captivate the attention. Draw it to the truths, Lord, that... We should receive today, anoint it for our good, our growth, our development, even if it's by conviction, we pray. And I ask you again, Father, anoint me to preach in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. A friend here the Bible is talking about. Now, we've been talking about determined, uh, we're determined to yield. Uh, We have to be determined to yield Because our lives are programmed in the line that as we yield to God, the construction of God enhances our life in greater ways. I was talking to the Sunday school class this morning about as we are yielded to God, the circumference of our life increases. Our persuasions, our influences. And so this morning, uh, the Holy Spirit can only enlarge us as we are yielding to God. The only way. Uh, we have to realize this because it is a biblical principle. We can't go beyond it. We have to be entirely His. And that's what the Holy Spirit is constructing on us, to be entirely His. There can be no second party that vies for our attention and equal affection. It has to be the Lord. So the Holy Spirit is busy about developing in our nature that type of love. To where as we can say with David, the Lord is my shepherd, I, I shall not want, have need of nothing. Now that doesn't come overnight or within a week or a month, but it comes by a lifelong process of the potter molding the clay. Amen. Amen. Now as we are prompted, we, we've been talking about divine urgings. That, in the Song of Solomon, how there were divine urgings that came to the bride that urged her To the realization that God was warning her to to, to get better in life. To follow him. He he was saying there's greater things I wish to show to you personally. So there was some experiences the Lord was prompting the bride to awaken to. And, And at the same time though with those urgings. There was a responsibility on the bride to yield herself to that. And with that come the decision of the will. He met her and, and when she was in the bed. 
And she had to get up to go to the door where he was. But the scripture says she delayed to the point he left without her. And so this morning, we've got to realize that as we are determined to yield, there's going to be a war of the will. I don't like that war to you, but it sure is prevalent every day. Uh, but nonetheless, there's victory assured to us. The Lord can send assistances along the way that help us yield more to him than ourselves. And so this morning, we want to talk about that. Uh, 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 the, the friendship of Christ. Now, I'm not belittling Christ like some ignorant men have tried to do. I, I was reading the other day, and I'm still amazed at these uh, faith movement people of the blasphemy. Uh, uh, this Kenneth Copeland man, he stated in his writings and preachings that he feels like that there's more begotten sons other than Jesus. Now, you tell me. I just, uh, I'm, I marvel at that, uh, boy, the adjectives I want to use seem brutal, but that's devilish, 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 and we've got to leave that stuff alone. Now, we're living in that hour of where people want to belittle Christ. I'm not belittling him today. I'm talking about one aspect of his tender devotion. That there comes a time. He helps us as a friend. And we need that. We need it. And, and one thing about a true friend. They understand. To the point. They'll help you the way you need to be helped. Without tolerating what's already hurting you. Right. They'll tell you what's wrong with you. They really won't enjoy it. Because there's a little conflict there. For a temporary moment in essence. But they'll tell you what's wrong. But they'll help you. Get beyond it. Now, I remember my uncle telling a story. It was back in his courting days where, that was way back in the 1900s. And uh, way out in the country. And Well, uh, my grandpa had put a rule down that boys couldn't be around the house after a certain time. Well, my uncle and this other boy, they kind of violated that rule. And they would sneak up in the backyard after it was dark because my grandpa was a farmer and he'd go to bed with the chickens and he'd get up with the chickens. And they'd talk through the window. Well, they didn't know it one dark night, but my grandpa was putting a new septic tank in. But for him to put a new one in, he had to dig up the old one. Well, that night, he got in a few hours before dark purposely. to, to he, he dug the dirt around from it, but the old lid there was an old metal lid, rusty it, 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 it was caved in, and that's the way Grandpa left it. It was back in the day you didn't have to put up, Brother Paul, that warning yellow sign and put a barrier up around every hole you dug. You could just kind of leave it as it is and start back. Well, my uncle and his buddy didn't know he had left that septic tank undone. Well, they got up to the, to the uh, uh, back window and was talking to my Grandpa's uh, daughters, which became their wives eventually. And uh, they were talking through the screen. They got to laughing. Well, my aunt thought they'd heard my grandpa rustle up. So she said, run, dad's coming. So they took off running. <laughs> well, when they ran, the buddy ran on the edge. My, my uncle ran right in the middle of that septic tank and that lid caved in with him. <laughs> Can you imagine? And, and he said, you know, I, I called out to my buddy. I said, hey, come help me get it out of this thing. And he stopped coming back. And all he did was pat me on the head and said, I'm sorry, Glenn. I got to go. And he took off running. <laughs> Can you imagine that? What a friend. I'd have killed him. Now, if that had been a true friend, he'd have got you out. But I don't know if I could have been a true friend in that kind of situation. Grandpa coming with a shotgun and here's my best buddy fell into a septic tank and it just ain't much there to stay behind for, I tell you. But we get into life situation. Now bear with me. The Lord, he does not want to stay in the same. He wants to urge us and prompt us inwardly to rise up. To meet the challenges that keeps our Adamic nature ineffective and also at the same time growing in the spirit. Listen, as we yield ourselves to God and we're growing in the spirit, our prayer life becomes more effective. 
I mean, there's so many things that becomes better as we're yielding to God. But at the same time, we know that when the Lord approaches us, as he approached that young lady that early morning and said, Arise up, my beloved. <clears throat> uh, the, the, the flowers are unblooming. He, he began to encourage her inwardly by saying, If you would yield to me right now, I would take you to experiences of beauty. And you and I would have intimate moments to where you would begin to enjoy the experience I'm calling you to uh, by commanding you. Uh, and listen, when the Lord comes to us, and, and I'm using using this symbolically, and it might be literally to some. Boy, the covers of that bed can feel good. In other words, the way we're living at the moment, we have developed a comfort with it. <clears throat> Our flesh is used to it. It's ingrained in a habit with it. And when the Lord first presents himself, it's hard to burst, uh, burst out of that habit. It's hard to break out of that form and routine. We do need some assistances for the Lord uh, uh, getting us to where we need to be. This morning, I want to tell you, there, there can be, uh, the Bible said in Proverbs that a, that a brother is born for what? Adversity. I don't know of any greater adversity I've come across than the war within my will. When I sense the Lord saying, come up higher, uh, do this a little more, yield a little more. I mean immediately, that flesh, Brother Childers, there's a fight that starts going on uh, and the devil has nothing to do with it. It's just my Adamic nature trying to do what? Create those inner restraining forces that's preventing me to do what? To get up from where I am in the habit of living and to yield in following Christ in a greater way. To where he says, if you would just yield and you would just come, a greater parameter of spiritual existence would be open to you. And friend, we must remember this. That is, that opens up to us. It gives us a greater persuasion of Christian influence on our children, on our family. It gives a greater atmosphere of the presence of God in our church services. So in, in all actuality, God is giving us an opportunity to, to accomplish things we want to accomplish but we know that yet and still it's hard to yield to that it's true we, we, we have an adversary and not only that we have even an adversary nature to the things of God now bear with me but the Bible says that uh, there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother right now I kind of that would have been neat to watch my friend Oh, or, my, or my uncle's friend pat him on the head and say, I'm sorry, Glenn, i got to go. You know what I'd love to have seen more than that? Where they reconcile the first time after that was over with. I'd have liked to see them meet one another and what kind of conversation transpired. You run off and left me. I'd, uh, that'd have been a neat conversation, wouldn't it? <laughs> but, but here the Bible says that in the time of adversity, a brother's been born. But I'll tell you what, a brother... Uh, has limitations a lot of times simply because of our own responsibilities, right? Now what the scripture in depth is applying here that even the body of Christ uh, uh, born for adversity can help to a limited scale. But he says, but you know, there is a friend that's closer than a brother. Here in the New Testament, Jesus said, ye are my friends if you do what I've commanded you. <clears throat> that means that Christ is going to get you on the same level that he desires you to be at to do what? To do for you what no other person or man or power or institution, preacher, Sunday school teacher, song leader, spouse, ch child can do. The Lord is saying there are some areas of life and the only way you're going to be able to yield uh, uh, to what I'm wooing you to is if, if you give yourself to me. Don't look uh, for help in a horizontal means. I'm the only one going to be able to help you. This morning church, I'm telling you, there is a friend that sticketh closer to a brother and he wants you to realize this morning that at that moment he begins to call you oh hallelujah to commit yourself in a greater way to him he knows you're going to go through a war he knows there's going to be adversity in that inward but he said there's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother now what do you mean in preacher what I'm saying is this that a true friend will let you draw from the resources he has
has in the time of your need. Amen. A true friend will let you draw from his resources when you have a need. Listen, Jesus told his disciples, he said, it's expedient that I go away. I have got to leave you because what you're about to go through, you're going to need me to be in your mind and in your heart. You're going to need me to be on the inside, prompting you with my strength. He said, and and so because of that, I'm leaving. But another comforter is coming and he will be in you. Hallelujah. Do you see what I'm saying this morning? Here is the Son of God. He's prompting us as a great high priest. Uh, uh, yield, come up higher. But at the moment, he, he speaks those words. Uh, he knows there's an immediate conflict. Oh, the covers of that bed feel better. I, I used to tell, boy, that old sleep monster, he knows to when to put you in a headlock, don't you? I mean, I can t- be tossing and turning. I can toss and turn all night long uh, until about an hour and a half before the alarm goes off and boy that bed becomes my best friend it feels like nothing else can feel it gets all of a sudden so comfortable I mean it puts you in a utopia almost uh, and then that alarm goes off and and there the adversity begins uh, in similar like instances uh, uh, you being very busy people you already having a lot of responsibility on you you already forming a habit of routine in daily living just for the simplic, uh, simplistic answer of order. Oh, the Lord, he, he simply some, invades that, doesn't he? And he begins to call us higher. And the only way we know we can get higher is through submitting to the labor of what it's going to take to get us there. And all of a sudden, an inward man begins to fight against it. It's at that time I need a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. What are you preaching about tonight? That Jesus Christ, this morning, Jesus Christ is made real by the Holy Ghost. Can you say amen? The paraclete, the companion that walks alongside of. That's why I'm telling you, if you're not a prayerful people, if you don't walk in light of the Spirit of God, the adversity within you is going to subdue you from taking advantage of the opportunities God's given to you. This morning I'm telling you, we must be a Pentecostal people for there to be greater openings of the power and persuasion of God in our life. You want to see your family help? I do too. Uh, Let's keep growing in the spirit when there are divine urgings. Uh, What's happening? I'll tell you what's happening. That great friend is saying, if you'll yield to me, uh, I'll let you draw from resources uh, that you have not at this time. I'll give you rivers of living water. They'll swell up and flow out of your innermost being and you'll be more than adequate. You'll be more than able to answer the call of yielding I'm putting on your life right now. The disciple said, Lord, you even got to teach us to pray. He said, I will. Then he increased it when the Holy Ghost come. He said, the Holy Ghost will pray in you. Right? He said, "And building up yourselves in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. This morning I'm telling you, as we walk in the Spirit, as we let the Holy Ghost refill us and refill us, uh, to where uh, uh, the, David said, my cup runneth over. Hallelujah. <clears throat> you know what that meant? That meant that out in those pasture lands, in the sun, that some of those shepherds had honed out in a big boulder, a trough, uh, and it would be by spring there. And they would come up to to, to let his sheep drink and, and so instead of letting them drink in that strong little current he'd get a bag and he'd get that cold water and he'd pour it over that rock trough uh, and he'd keep pouring it not till it just got filled but he would pour it and he'd pour it under that cold water would run over what was he doing? he was cooling that rock uh, because if he just poured water in there and let it set the heat of that rock would create such heat in that water to when the sheep if they did ingest it it would make them detrimentally sick uh, what do you saying brother Norris he was saying by the continual running of that water he, he was taking away every every section of adversary every section of adverse circumstances this morning thank God for the Holy Ghost when there's conflict that comes my way I, a lot of you are experiencing conflict and one of the reasons of the many reasons is the devil does not want you going any further in the spirit of God he does not want heaven open up into you any more greater 
greater power in praying for your family, praying for this church, praying for this nation, praying for the end time events. I'm encouraging you today. You're in a battle. We're in a time of great adverse situation. But there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And if a brother is born for adversity, how much more is this friend able to help you and I? Even when the adverse circumstances are, are born within us of our own nature, he is able, hallelujah, to get us to the place we can say yes. If you'll stay full of the Holy Ghost, if you'll stay real filled with the Holy Ghost, you will get up and arise and meet the demands of that calling to where the power of God can come on your life in a greater way. Hallelujah to his name. Now, I know a lot of people don't want to hear this today. Because you've already given up on answering and yielding. You have. But there are some that has not. And I'm preaching to the, I'm preaching to all of you. But to those that have not given up. I'm encouraging you that God has still got a plan that's going to answer the hungerings and the thirstings of your life. And don't feel bad about unanswered prayer. You just be concerned about continuing prayer. For this friend is working about to give you the delights and desires of your heart. If you'll keep He said, Ye are my friends. If you do what I tell you you to do. Just do what he tells you to do. Be like Mary said. Whatever he says to do, just do it and the outcome will be far better than you could ever imagine. Let's trust the outcome to him and battle against these adverse inward strengths against us. We can only do it by the Holy... We have to have an assistance. When the Lord... The best thing you can do, I've learned that when the Lord's asking for you greater commitment is to pray through to a refilling of the Holy Ghost right then. And what you're doing is this. You're doing the very thing you need to do so you can say yes. Because it's going to take the supernatural strength of God to bathe your affection, to denounce the Adamic nature, and cause that spiritual man to rise up and say, Lord, whatever. Amen. Whatever, Lord. I wonder how many of Abraham's descendants would have been blessed if Abraham would have not went to Mount Moriah and laid that boy down. You see, God didn't want Abraham's son. He just wanted his heart. And this morning, God's not wanting to destroy you. He's just wanting your heart. Young people, He's just wanting your heart. Now, it's good that you bear the yoke in your youth. If you can just lay down on this altar and live on this altar and stay close to God, I'm here to tell you that the greatness of life can, be, can begin to be yours. Amen. And there's no other greatness of life to know that I'm walking with God, performing His perfect will. So you say, Brother Norris, it's a... It's hard because I, I realize this in my own life. I realize this about the enemy. He wants us totally depleted of all inward strengths, staminas, attributes, characteristics that keep us right and growing. He wants to de that depleted. He wants to delete any inward desire to be godly. What do you do? You just going to let him do it? No. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fight, Brother Norris. And I say this a lot of Mr. You're going to fight one way or another. <laughs> If you're not serving God right, you're going to fight, but you're not going to have the resources of God to help you. But if you're serving God, you're my friends. If you do, the resources of heaven is to you. You'll overcome. You'll overcome. This friend is calling you this morning. The friendship of Christ is calling you to overcome. I'm telling you today, is it easy? No, sir, it's sure not. But you see, a friend will be deliberate in bringing out the best in you. You see, a friend understands that good can be evil when good is keeping his friend from best. We're in a culture to where if you're just good, you've reached the pinnacle of hope. That's still not the aim of the Word of God. We're living for full accomplishment and growing in His presence, performing His will. And the true church is being urged in this hour. Arise. Get up. Why? Because God wants to open you up parameters that you know you're going. He knows you'll delight in once you get there and that experience with Him. Come down. You, brother, don't you say, at certain seasons I'm highly repetitive because that's what God wants for that time. And you'll notice all of a sudden I'll quit saying those things again. Why? Because He's lifted. The opportunity's gone or either experience has been accomplished. But arise. Come away, my beloved. Let us go down to the garden. Oh, what's He wanting to show you in life today? But you're going to have to yield. You're going to have to yield. And, and I'm afraid some of us are, are to the point now where we can't even hear. So if we cannot hear, 
How can we yield? And if we can't yield, how are we going to arrive at the experiences that our heart is fed with the sheer delight that only the accomplishments of Christ can create and bring? Oh, God, give us a listening ear. Amen, a friend. He'll let you draw from his resources when you have none and you're in a time of need. A true friend, he'll, he'll <clears throat> love you enough to tell you what's wrong, but at the same time say, can I help make it right? A true friend, he understands you. You know, uh, uh, one, one definition of a friend, as far as descriptive definition was, when everybody walks out, they walk in. Right? And they'll tell you the truth. They might not make a big splash, but they'll say, well, here's where it's wrong, and here's the way to make it right. And wish to get it right. And that's the way Christ is. He, he'll, he'll put a wall up. He won't let you go. I mean, your life will not increase any until you deal with the error. Matter of fact, you know what thing about adults, here's where it's dangerous. Before he touches us with chastisement, sometimes, depending on where our children are walking, or our family members are walking, or how our job situation, he will affect us from endearing objects from without. To do what? Get our attention. What's he doing? Arise. Get up. Serve me this way. Well, our swines are always rules. Rules are order that lead people to development. And this morning, God's trying to make it easy for you to grow and to gain, to find the power of heaven. When he says, commit yourself to me. So Brother Norris, boy, it's just, uh, yeah, I, I kind of use that definition too. Uh, thinking, Lord, I can't do this. It just seems, how can I? But you know, when I pray through to the Holy Ghost refills me, I think, you know, it'll be okay. He's going to help me. He's going to help me. And he will every time without fail. But I'm asking you, are you willing to yield? To the friendship of Christ. Are you willing that he'll come down and confront you. Even with an, a season of conflict to say. Don't stay where you are. Life will enclose. Or, this lady in song. When she finally thought it's time to seek him. Is when darkness had surrounded her. And she got up to seek him. And she couldn't find him. <clears throat> that was scary. I'm telling you this morning. God in our churches. There is a, some people somewhere. You're sensing divine urgings, promptings. <clears throat> I'm urging you to go on. Grow in Christ. Because you're going to hold the key for not only the rest of these here, but others that are come. Amen. Oh, that God would open up these parameters. Yes. Amen. Oh, you see this lady in the Song of Solomon, she said, and I want you to listen to this. She says, uh, the sun has cooked me. I'm dark. The reason is I've been out working hard because my family made me to be the keeper of their vineyards to the point I couldn't take care. I'm a slave. What was she? She was talking about I'm being abused. I'm being abused. Life will abuse you if you won't yield to Christ. <clears throat> it will. And it'll set you up in a beautiful trap until that door shuts. And you'll be in a season of such aggravation and frustration. And you'll say, why didn't I yield? Why didn't I yield? Why didn't I yield? The Holy Spirit is saying, yield today. Yield today. She said, I'm being abused. She says, I can't even enjoy life because I'm, I'm being treated wrongly. <clears throat> like I said, a friend knows all about our wrongs, our abuses. And they will stand beside us lovingly trying to correct if we'll let them. Sometimes people won't let the friendship of Christ have rule in their life. Why? He demands make things right. Whew. Did you hear how quiet that one got? Did, do you sense a holy hush here right now? You can't be wrong with your neighbor. Can't be wrong. You can't harbor ill will. You can't be cold in your heart. You can't be a liar. You can't be a cheater. You can't be a fornicator. You can't. You can't be sinful. 
He said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. I remember making a lady in Kentucky mad at me. I thought she was going to slap me. She come up telling me big visions that God was giving her and God was showing her and God was blessing her. And, and, and she, you know, addicted with nicotine, never went to church. And I said, no, he's not. I said, you're asking me? She asked me, do you think God's doing this? And here's what God's doing. And God's, do you think? And I said, no, he's not. I said, I can tell you why. The Bible says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. That ain't God doing nothing. Boy, she got mad. Well, she kind of aggravated me by putting me on the spot in front of people. As if I'd cower down. Oh, boy, you talk about it. Was, it was quiet. I was telling you, you don't go to church. And the Bible says, for snakes, not, forsake not the seven. You, you broke that commandment. And I was trying to tell her of all the things she was doing with her money that wasn't helping her children. And not being a good steward. She didn't want to hear that. Phew, she's gone. About three weeks later, her husband got killed. After all these people had prophesied to him this was going to happen with his life, he was going to be doing this and doing that, she didn't want the friendship of Christ. And because she didn't want the friendship of Christ, she experienced the suffering and the tenacity of ad adverse circumstances. And this morning, the Lord's trying to prevent... Listen, church, I'm not being a smart aleck. Please, talk, don't tell You cannot miss church frequently you cannot miss praying frequently miss studying this bible frequently miss giving to god frequently and be right with the lord it violates this word people don't like to hear that it's sin listen i'm please i'm trying to be nice be common sense about it i know people boy you know Back home, years ago, they asked me to preach my home, to pastor my home church. I thought, ain't no way. Ain't no way. It'd be lovey-dovey for two weeks, and they'd pull out the shotguns and the knives and the mortars and the, everything else. In the, why? Dealing with unfaithfulness. You know, they think Gary could come back there, and, and they think he would tolerate all their inconsistencies. Bless you, Lord. Huh? You know, Brother, Brother Charles, they would drive... Anywhere to experience the pleasure of the flesh. But when he got to church, they had a sprained ankle. That's lying to God. What I'm trying to say is this. If we don't yield to God, adverse circumstances will so press us, we will become self-deceived. And we'll make excuses in being obedient. When obedience is the only channel that the greatness of God can be opened up to us. Amen. And I'm not being and I'm not a perfect parent, but you that are parents, don't let your kids become self-deceived. Right. Amen. Ask them hard questions. Don't let them make excuses for their flesh. It, and I'll agree with you, it's so easy to do, but there's nothing profitable about that. Everything's detrimental about it. Amen. That's enough meddling, okay. But the Lord was presenting himself to this lady to say, you don't like where you are, do you? No. She said, if you'd draw me, I'd follow after you. He said, okay, I'm going to do what you said. Later in the book, he come down and said, get up, my beloved. And she didn't. Another time, get up, my beloved. Brother Chilton, she waited again. And so this morning, Brother Norris, the friendship of Christ, it's not just to make us feel good. It's not just to say, I'll tolerate your wrong. It's to take us from one spot, get us to the next. It's to help us in those intense times of adverse situations in our heart when that old Adamic nature say, live it this way. Don't listen to the preacher. You don't have to go somewhere where you can feel like you fit in. Don't listen to that old Sunday school teacher. You don't have to listen to your mom and your dad. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. That's right. You got to listen to a pastor. You got to listen to a Sunday school teacher and you got to listen to mom and dad because they're authoritative institutions that God commands you to do so. Why? To keep you directed right. But do you ever find out the flesh wants you to cast off everything that can help you? Even godly confrontation to where this great friend says, uh, I, uh, 
I just want to talk to you probably why things are going the way they are is because it's you. What do you mean? It, isn't it funny how affection can change? You ever been in the shower and somebody cold, poured just freezing cold water over you? What do you do? You go through an immediate transformation of spirit, will, attitude, and desire. Somebody can be singing in the shower, "Oh, love of God, how rich and how many, and cold water hit them. I'll strangle you halfway to death when I get out of here. I mean, just a a change. What does that say? It's a silly illustration, but it shows you and I can be changed that quick with adverse circumstances. Preacher included. That's why you got to walk in the Spirit to let the Holy Ghost answer for you. We don't have very many good answers, but but He sure does. And it's sad today, the friendship of Christ in the world has been excluded because he said, ye are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Amen. That type of friendship of Christ is thrown out the window. The way the friendship of Christ is being preached today is his mercy and grace will tolerate you any way that you are and whatever you do. Yeah. That's not friendship. Friendship will pull you, so to speak, up out of that septic. And get you to a water hose and wash you off. Amen? Yeah. Friendship. Now listen. You ladies will say, how does this make me look? Are you open to that? <laughs> I mean, we ask things hoping we get the answer we want. But offended if we don't get that answer. When the whole time it's your fault for asking. Amen. You know, we are turned into liars by fear of man. Do, do you, do, does this make me look okay? Yeah. Lord, forgive me. I didn't mean to say that. Lord, Lord cleanse my soul from lying. Lord, help me. Does this make me look younger? Praise the Lord. You think about it. If we were to give just blunt, curt answers, we wouldn't have church, we'd have brawls. <laughs> I ain't going back there no more. I made a smart little remark like that to me. <laughs> Who she thinks she is, Miss Fashion Designer? <laughs> what are you saying, Brother Norris? If you're not ready for the truth, the truth will stir you right. in the wrong way. The apostle said, do I make you an enemy by telling you the truth? When Jesus comes and he says, that's wrong, how do we react to that? Well, the way we react to it in our day is we put it off and ignore it. Or we find a place or a people that won't ever bring it up again. Is that what we really need? Or do we need to look at ourselves and say, no, I just didn't do what he told me to do. Amen. Nobody fault but mine. Amen. I'm not living right. It's nobody's fault but mine. And see, a lot of the trouble is that the friendship of Christ can't be received because we're not prepared for his answers. We come, you know, thinking, well, the, 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 the suit I wore today or the dress you wore today they are impressive to other people like we want it to be. And that's the kind of answers we want that bolster our ego and make us feel good. Well, there are some very pretty dresses and nice-looking suits. Sometimes they don't make you look younger or better, but they're nice. We, we don't come prepared for the truth. And when somebody says, no, it don't make you look any bit younger. Matter of fact, you just got the same old wrinkles you've always had. And you, matter of fact, your hair don't look worth looking at today. And you, what's wrong? You're just plain ugly. <laughs> what kind of communication would that do? Or, or you, <laughs> Woo! Fumes, steam. 
No, a friend would say, when you bought it, they, oh, hey, look, let's look in the mirror. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. And you go get another dress say, try this one on. And then you brag on truth. Boy, that, now that's you. That really adds to you. you you'd be crazy not to buy that. that look, look at this. Isn't that beautiful? And you just walk out there. Whoo, head big. Praise the Lord. What a friend. And they basically said the same thing. Just in such a different way. The other one says, you ask me, that, 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 that you look terrible. No, you, this was, wait, wait, wait a minute. Let me, wait, wait, wait just a minute. Oh, try, just try this one on. They accomplished the same thing. The Lord, He understands your heart. And He'll come with grace and mercy, first of all. Right? Trying to prepare. You see, the fact is, we don't walk in the Spirit to where we're ready for that truth. And it offends us. It hurts us. Matter of fact, he makes us mad. But you see, the friendship of Christ is about this. You have a responsibility to do what he said. Then if you will, oh, he'll bless you. He'll help you. He'll open up greater facets of Christianity to you. You ever made people mad by a wrong answer? You know what's worse than that? Is when you make them mad by a right answer. This morning, I'm asking you a question. Are you allowing the friendship of Christ to confront you? Are you really drawing from his resources when yours are depleted? Are you letting him tell you things that are wrong, how to make them right? Or adverse circumstances inwardly, are they the chief adjuster of your life now? I close with this story of a Romanian soldier named Ana. Ana was a Christian. And the Russian soldiers, when they come in, begin to take certain cities. He was just terrified. The bombings, the machine gun barrages, the shouts, the screams, the blood. And he kept going from city to city. Just terrified. Well, one night there came an uh, ambush attack to where Ana was separated from the rest of his comrades by machine gun and mortars. And he fled deep into the woods. And he had missed sleep so many nights because of fear and apprehension. Till he, he said in his, in his writing there, that diary article, he said, I, I just collapsed at the foot of a big tree. He said, when I come to, he said, I jumped up and grabbed my gun scared. And he said, I still heard, heard shooting in the distance. And he said, I racked my bolt, loaded my rifle, and he said, I began to creep to this area to see if it be ours that were winning or theirs. And he said, the whole time, I was just trembling. Fear, because he said, I, I was afraid of what I'd be confronted with. He had developed a projection of what he felt like he'd be confronted with. He said, as I got to the edge of the woods, I, st I stood in the shadows of the tree. But he said, I heard a, a pop behind me. And he said, he looked, and he said, here come a, Ru a Russian soldier walking. He hadn't seen me yet. He said, and I could have just turned and shot him. But he said, that was the, the straw that just caused me to cave in. And he said, I collapsed. I dropped my gun. And he said, I fell to my knees. And he said, I put my head in my hands, and I began to cry and pray. And he was calling out to God. And he said, I was just yielding myself to God. Uh, and the outcome of this. And he said, I was waiting till I felt the cold muzzle of that Russian rifle come up against the base of my skull. But he said, all of a sudden, I felt a hand on my shoulder. And he said, I looked, and this Russian soldier knelt down and began to pray with him. He said, and all of a sudden, the flood of God's peace flooded my heart. And he said, we looked at one another and smiled, knowing we couldn't communicate because of the barrier lane. But, but I said, hallelujah. And he said the same word. And he said, I walked as that Russian watched as he patted me on the shoulder and smiled. And he picked up his rifle and he started running through the woods. And he come way back in, 
way across the valley, and he joins his forces on the other side over there. You know, not everybody that confronts you is your enemy. But the reason you have apprehensive is already the premeditated projection of how you're going to be confronted. Friendship in Jesus. Oh, what joy divine. And the reason we have those projections is all this. We know how we want to live. And we don't want to be changed from that. But it can't be that way. If you're unfaithful, you're wrong. You're wrong. If you're contradicting the scripture, you're wrong. Why are you telling me that, Brother Lawrence? Why are you being so harsh? Because the Bible says the only way you can be his friend is if you do what he's commanded. Why? What's so big about you being concerned about me being his friend? Because that's the only way that those garden experiences will be opened up to you. And the greater experiences of God will be opened up to you. You've got to do what he says. If you don't, Go ahead and quit. Don't fool yourself. Enjoy as much as this world as you can because that will be the only heaven you ever experience. But if you're really concerned about saying, God, I admit, there's, there's such an inward restraining force. And sometimes, Lord, I just don't yield. I just don't yield. I don't find the spiritual strength to yield. There's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother that can help that. And when you pray through to a good old refilling of the Holy Ghost, you'll find the strength to yield and to stay that way. And that's when it seems like doors get open for you and your children. And God begins to shower down increases of blessing. And oh, life gets good. Friendship of Christ. Somebody's got to tell you, if you're wrong, you're wrong. Somebody's got to tell you, if you're not going to church and you're making excuses that are not right before God, you're wrong. And if you're not praying and you make excuses why you're not praying, you're wrong. If you're making excuses why you're not reading your Bible and they're not valid, they're, you're wrong. If you have all in your heart towards your brother, your sister, you're wrong. You're wrong. If you're not living the way you ought to be living, if you've you got worldliness in your life, cold, you're wrong. Why do you tell me that, preacher? I'll tell you why. I'm a friend. I'm a friend. I'm telling you this great friend that I touched base with this morning. Told me to tell you the reason he's confronting you. He's got something else for you. What a savior. What a savior. Lord we love you. Lord, we love you. What a, help us, Lord. Lord, it is hard to yield. Lord, you know within my life, the battle of the will. All of us are like that, Lord Jesus. But Lord, if the Holy Ghost will help us, we can say yes. Holy Karambo Kendaramo Sandalame Kendaramo. Inalambo Seketaramo Haya. Hallelujah. Lord, this morning, would you please help people to have a desire to keep yielding? <clears throat> oh, hallelujah. Can we just worship him a moment, church, right now in your heart? Could you just say, oh, Lord, I reach out to you, Lord, because you're wonderful. Lord, we praise you this morning. We love you. God, we do want our lives to be better. We want our children's lives to be better. Oh, Lord, I want to be used greater. I want the circumference of life to increase for me to where I can persuade people better. Oh, God, I want more of love in my heart toward you, toward the household of faith. I want you to touch my heart this morning, Lord Jesus, and soften me and help me to become a new person as far as yielding, Father. Because I want to leave a legacy to where my kids can walk right and talk right. My peers can be encouraged. Hallelujah to the Lord of hosts. Lolo McKenzie. If you're here this morning, you say, Brother Norris, right now in my life, there is adverse circumstances inwardly because, Brother Norris, I'm struggling to yield. 
There's been fresh communication of God come to my heart, Brother Norris, and it's such a battle of my will. Oh, this preacher's been there. I can relate with you. Brother Norris, it's, just, it's embarrassing to say sometimes that, that I'm more successful at not yielding than I am in yielding. But Brother Norris, I'm not giving up. I want the friendship of Christ to affect my life. I want him to open up such degrees of, of blessing and answered prayer that I marvel and, and I remain all stricken at his goodness. But Brother Norris, the, the issue is not now. I'm just, my will, I'm battling in my will to yield. And I know, listen, Brother Norris not, doesn't think you're a sinful person. That's not the issue I've come across. The issue is, don't, don't, don't miss what, what there is for you. Don't, don't hinder the dream or, or the desire of God for you and your family. But if you're here and say, Brother Norris, my will, I'm battling, I'm struggling. Would you be brave enough to slip up your hand toward God in a public show? No one looking around. Yes. Brother Norris, yes. God bless these young people. Oh, what a save. Yes. What about it, Mom or Dad, Grandma, Grandpa? Yes. Don't give up. Kids, don't give up. Hallelujah. One reason we've got to have a Holy Ghost revival is we must have a renewal in the arena of yielding. Everyone stand with me today.